So by now, you've probably figured out that taking a limit is just a matter of some nice little algebra techniques and tricks. Um, and this problem is going to be no different. So this algebra technique uh, applies whenever you have fractions inside of fractions. We call them composite fractions. Uh, before we get started, I do want to confirm just by direct substitution that we actually have an indeterminate form. So please remember to always plug in first and see if you can evaluate it. If not, if you get like zero over zero or something, then you got to do more work. Okay. So first things first, I am going to plug in this negative 2 for x's. Um, that's negative 1 half there, and then negative 2 plus 2. And I can pretty quickly see that 1 half plus a negative 1 half is 0, and that negative 2 plus 2 is also 0. So I truly have an indeterminate form, which means that I can't take the limit without doing some work first. Okay. So here's a technique, I'm going to show you several throughout the video, uh, that have to do with fractions that are really going to help. First things first, um, I'm going to kind of deal with the denominator with this idea. Check this out. 3 over 2. When you're dividing a number by another, you can actually pull the denominator off to the side and call this 1 half times 3. This is going to be a great skill that you can use all through this class, and the sooner you figure it out, the better off you're going to be. All right, so in this problem, I'm going to basically apply that by pulling this denominator off to the side. Okay. So the denominator has been taken care of, pulled off to the side like this. And what I'm left with are a couple of fractions being added right here. Now, we know that adding fractions is a matter of common denominators. So let's do it. 2 and x, yeah, the common denominator is going to be 2x. So this one gets multiplied by x over x and this one by 2 over 2. I have not taken the limit yet, so I'm going to continue writing um, this notation until I actually evaluate the limit. For now, I'm just massaging and manipulating with algebra, not actually doing anything. So this is my 1 over x plus 2, and then that becomes x over 2x plus 2 over 2x. And if you pause or think about it for a second, I hope you're feeling pretty happy about this next algebra step. Maybe seeing things that are going to cancel. Look into your future. It is bright. Okay, so um, I continue to have my x plus 2 here, but when I combine my fractions, notice that adding across the top also gives me x plus 2. And on the bottom I have 2x, right, adding fractions. Okay, so some of you might be seeing already that since these factors match on top and bottom, they're going to cancel. If you're not super comfy with that yet, I'm going to go ahead and do another step to hopefully like make that feel okay for you. When I multiply fractions, I multiply straight across the numerators and straight across on the denominators. So 1 times this is just going to be x plus 2. And on the bottom, x plus 2 times 2x, I'm not going to multiply through. You're going to find in calculus that it doesn't usually help to multiply things out because I'm looking for canceling. So now it's canceled. When you cancel all the factors from the numerator, remember that you are left with 1 on top, and then there's that 2x on bottom that didn't cancel. And now I'm going to be able to evaluate the limit by plugging in negative 2, and I get something like negative 1 fourth as my limit. So if you kind of follow your nose on this problem, think in terms of like, I just need to add fractions together, you're going to get this technique pretty well. Um, I'm going to do one more example with you guys, so if you're feeling confident, go ahead and stop the video and get started on your practice. But if you need another example, let's take a look. All right, so this is an excellent problem to work with. Um, it actually requires a couple more fraction techniques and tricks that I would love to show you, so stay tuned. Um, but first things first, let's try to evaluate this thing by plugging in that, that one half for x. Ooh, before we do that, pause for a second. Notice here that we have a negative exponent, x to the negative 1 power. So this brings us all the way back to like integrated 1, integrated 3 especially, we did a lot of stuff. So remember your rule that anything to the negative power 
is just one over that thing. So we're going to invoke that little rule here real quick before we jump in. So x to the negative one power is just one over x. And then this is x minus one half. Now I'm going to plug in one half for x and attempt to evaluate by direct substitution. Let's see what happens. This becomes one over one half minus two all over one half minus one half. Okay, the denominator is pretty easy to evaluate. A half minus a half is going to be zero. Um, the top, however, I kind of run into this composite fraction again, one divided by a half. So here's how I think about it. We got to take a trip back to elementary school. Do you remember that when I said something like one divided by a half? That's really like one divided by one half. So I can rewrite it with that symbol, and it kind of jogs my memory as a little kid that the rule is to flip and multiply or multiply by the reciprocal. So this is now 1 times 2 over 1, or just 1 times 2, and the answer is positive 2. Okay, so back over here, that means this is just 2 minus 2. Another way you can think about it, if you like, is thinking in terms of how many 1 halves go into a whole. Well, it takes two halves to make a whole. So that's another way of kind of doing it in your head if you want to think. Um, but essentially, I'm left with an indeterminate form, 0 over 0. So I know that I have some work to do. OK, so first things first, I'm going to use that trick again of pulling the denominator off to the side. But before I do that, I want to maybe add some of my fractions. And you can kind of choose the steps that you want to do here, the order. But I think I'm going to go ahead and simplify the fractions on top by adding, and then also the ones on bottom by adding. So on the top, I've got a 1 over x minus 2 over 1. And in the denominator, I've got x over 1 minus 1 over 2. So to get common denominators between these two, I would just need to multiply this by an x over x. And for these two, I just need to multiply this one by a 2 over 2. I have not taken the limit yet, so I continue to write the limit as x approaches 1 half. And now I can start to simplify. So this becomes 1 over x minus 2x over x all over 2x over 2 minus 1 over 2. All right, let's keep going. The numerator simplifies to 1 minus 2x all over x. The denominator simplifies to 2x minus 1 all over 2. And now I'm going to start using that idea of flip and multiply. So this divided by that is essentially like 1 minus 2x over x divided by this fraction. But like we talked about a little earlier, anytime I divide by a fraction, that means multiply by the reciprocal. So flip and multiply. And now that we've reached this point, it's really tempting to look at this and see 1 minus 2x would cancel with 2x minus 1, but be really mindful that like the terms are not in the same order, right? This is 1 minus the 2x, and this is the 2x minus the 1. So we can actually handle that by factoring out a negative 1, right? So if I want this 2 to be negative and I want that one to be positive, then I can just factor out a negative. And it would look like this. It's negative 1 times 1 minus 2x. And confirm for yourself that if you multiply this back through, the negative would make that a negative 1, just like it was before. And it would make this one a positive 2x, just like it was before. And I can rearrange the terms to kind of make them match this one up here. All right, so now we're like taking a deep sigh of relief. And this 1 minus 2x cancels with that 1 minus 2x. So I'm left with still haven't taken the limit. But 
I got something like 2 over a negative x, and when I plug in this 1 half, it's 2 over negative 1 half. And I'm going to do kind of that trick again in my head of either flipping and multiplying, or I can think how many halves go into two holes. Either way, the answer is 4, and that's going to be negative.